All right. Um, Chelsea Manning. Uh, isn't Chelsea Manning, if I if I have it right? Chelsea is, I can't remember his name before he claimed he was a woman. Um, but Peyton. He, Peyton. No, not Peyton Manning. <laughs> I know enough oh, to know I that's not to, right. You almost go got it. Right, darn it. What was his name? Uh, uh, anyway. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, Chelsea. Uh, he's go. now chiming in because he claims to be a woman. Bradley Manning. Bradley Manning. Yeah. That name would, that one seems like fake to me. That one seems like, no, that's not his name. Oh, no, sorry. Anyway. That's Eli. It was Eli. Anyway. Uh, Archie? Che <laughs> Archie. Chelsea Manning uh, is now speaking out about abortion and the potential of the Supreme Court uh, ruling. And um, he tweets yesterday, for those of you who are just catching up, if you're able to afford it and it's safe for you to do so, you should consider arming yourselves, then finding others to train with in teams. Learn how to, to defend your community. We may need these skills in the very near future. Huh. Now, I don't know why this person that cannot have a baby they cannot carry a child because she's a he. It's a dude, dude. So I don't know what right this white male has to chime in on abortion rights, but I really want to focus on is, is this allowed on Twitter to be able to say, hey, get ready for a civil war and arm yourselves and start training? Uh, and then the replies are, is the implication here that overturning Roe versus Wade would incur civil war? If so, does someone have a broad brush stroke sense of how that chain of event might might unfold? Um, yeah, somebody does. Roe goes, then the power of the 14th Amendment goes. The 14th goes, so do several other human rights. Civil unrest follows. Wow. Uh, okay. I mean, I've been to the secret meetings of all the white people. We get together 730s Tuesdays on Denny's at Denny's. And um, I've been to those meetings. I have not heard the 14th Amendment abolishment plan spoken out loud. Yeah, they're not going to say that out loud. Not going to say it out loud. They're going to order a grand slam. Yeah. And then they're going to. And when they, when they say Grand Slam, they mean 14th, 14th Amendment. Amendment. Mm -hmm. It's code. It's a dog whistle. All right. It's a dog whistle. Um, then uh, Carrie Lee uh, writes in I used to be opposed to the idea of owning firearms, with no small part of being how much I felt I would be at risk of self harm from the depression I had before transitioning. Wow, that is, that's really sad. But now it doesn't seem like an extreme message, which is terrifying. Yeah, yeah, think it, think it, I think it probably is. Now the left is online on Twitter talking about arming themselves for a civil war. Interesting, because it's happening on Twitter before Elon Musk has said, hey, you should arm yourself and we should have a race riot. So apparently the algorithm is okay with violence on Twitter. Hmm. Yet the media cannot handle Elon Musk buying Twitter at all. Elon Musk, I guess he, you know, he misses the old South Africa in the 80s. He wants yeah. he wants that back. Reminds me of old Bond movies where, you know, Dr. Evil and guys like that or Goldfinger <laughs> were, were going to take over the media. Uh, I, I just, it, my tummy meter says there's something just my not great about this. If you get invited to something where there are no rules, where there is total freedom uh, for, for everybody, do you actually want to go to that party? Can you stop? Or um, yeah, I, I go to those parties all the time. Almost every party I go to does not send me a list of rules. You really? Know? Yeah. I go to parties <laughs> and they're like, well, I mean, there is one rule. My wife gives it to me. Don't make anybody cry or want to kill themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you never live up. To and that I rule. never live up to that. I break that every time. But do you want to go to a party without rules? Yeah. Most people do. Most people do. Because we have common ethics. Now, do I want to go to a party with anarchists? Well, um, depends on who the anarchist is. You know, um, Penn Jillette says he's an anarchist. 
Michael Malice is an anarchist. I don't mind going to a They'd both party. be pretty fun at parties. They'd be I, fun imagine. at parties. Yeah. And I wouldn't feel in danger at all. So, so this, of course, Mr. Potato Head, I'm sorry, Ms. Uh, Generic potato head mm-hmm. is uh, is is making uh, once again just a stupid analogy. How dumb are their viewers? How dumb are the voters of the left? Because do they? I mean, they actually have to believe this stuff, right? And I, I don't even think you're making a judgment there. You're making a judgment based on the way they talk to their voters. They oh, yeah. must know they're idiots. I, I'm not. I don't even have to look at the voters and say, "Okay, they must be idiots." No, what the way the left media speaks to their own voters shows you they must know they're idiots. You know, I, I can't tell you how many interviews I did with people in the media, um, you know, that never got printed, and they would ask, "Why? Why the success? Why? How did this happen?" And I'm like, well, I've been doing it for 30 years. Nobody, no, nobody, nobody in the media noticed because I wasn't doing it in New York. Uh, there's, there's number one. Two, I don't treat my audience like they're imbeciles. When I first got into television, they all said, you can't, no, that's too complex. You can't do that. People won't pay attention. Really? Because I think they will. I think they will. I think people are starving for the truth and starving for somebody to tell them what it really means. Somebody to explain big principles. Nobody wants to walk around like a dummy all the time. And what is this society doing? First, they treated you like an imbecile. Now they're insisting on you being an imbecile. You, you're not being taught math. If you're in school, you're not being taught math. You're not being taught history. You're not being taught how to think. You're not being taught how to question. You're not being taught any of that stuff. You are being taught to be somebody who marches in the streets. For what? For anything your leader tells you to do. Don't think it through. Because if you think it through, you might disagree with it. And if you disagree with it, you're out. This is, this is everything the left does, they accuse the right of doing. Listen to this. Some of the most high-profile liberal figures have joined together to encourage advertisers to boycott Twitter if Elon Musk brings his promised policy of unfettered free speech. Okay, this in America. 26 NGOs and advocacy groups have signed the letter expressing concern about the world's richest man's plan. No, you know that they don't ever really make a big deal out of Bezos? And how much he controls. Ah, Bill Gates. Ah. Well, this crazy idea, Glenn, that a rich person could buy something that influences our politics. What could possibly... There's no precedent of a rich person owning a media company. <laughs> now, by the way, I got that information from Bloomberg, so I know <laughs> it's got to be true. This is insanity. Musk himself responded to the letter asking who funds this uh, this group. The answer being an assortment of dark money groups like George Soros's Open Society Foundation, NGOs founded by former Clinton and Obama administration staffers, wealthy white Democratic donors and their family foundations. So his takeover of Twitter is going to toxify our information, and it's a direct threat to public safety, especially among those already most vulnerable and marginalized. Who's the most vulnerable? Who is the most vulnerable? The most vulnerable are the people who can't read, who have a limited education, who have been sucked in onto the teat of the government, who has gone through government-funded schools and listened to the lies that are being taught by the teachers' unions. They're the people that are, are out of sight, out of mind, that just watch whatever drivel spills out of TikTok and they're the ones that Kamala Harris can step in front of and say, big country, bad, little country, good, or anything else that the potato on CNN or anybody says. Those are the most vulnerable. Those who have an education, 
even and more importantly, if it's an education they earned, they actually did it themselves. They did it because they were curious, not because they wanted a piece of paper. Those are not the most vulnerable. Your ad dollars can either fund Musk's vanity project or hold him to account. We call on you to demand Musk uphold these basic standards of community trust and safety and pull your advertising spending from Twitter if they are not. Okay, so who is this? Well, the usual suspects. Uh, policy spokesman for Hillary Clinton's campaign, nephew of David Axelrod, former senior advisor of Barack Obama, uh, Media Matters, we know who they are, uh, David Brock, and and George Soros and Hillary Clinton's money. Um, Ultraviolet, who are these people? Um, well, they founded the group on the principle that with a combination of organizing, technology, creative campaigning, and people power, we can win. Oh, wow. They're backed by several unions, among them the American Federation of Labor, Congress of Industrial Organizations, AFL-CIO, and the American Federation of Teachers. Isn't that weird? Uh, by the way, um, the other group, Media Matters, yeah, yeah. Did you know that they were uh, taking donations from the National Education Association, America's largest union, representing teachers? Seems like the teachers' unions, man, they are all over this. And then other backers, like Chicago-based billionaires, uh, members of one of America's richest family who made their money through the Hyatt uh, hotel chain, um, Nicholas Pritzker, he's 76 years old. He started the Libra Foundation. Uh, that's an organization that supports frontline organizations building a world where communities of color thrive. This is fantastic. Um, you've got foreign entities that are involved in funding these organizations. That's who do, uh, who's doing it. By the way, that isn't just for Twitter. That email has gone out. Saying you've got to boycott. This is ESG. You watch. Twitter. You have to understand if you advertise for Twitter that there's some reputational risk to your company. But you choose whatever. That letter has also gone out about abortion. You've got to stand for abortion and your company has to publicly back it. Uh, otherwise, there's some reputational risk. America, you going to be held hostage? Are you going to do it? Are you going to keep paying them? The mob is at your door. And they're offering you protection. You know, you just have to pay this little fee. How odd is it for you, huh? Get off of Twitter. Stop advertising. You know, I'm just asking you. You know, you're either with us or you're against us. And, you know, maybe bad things happen the businesses that don't play the game. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know there's a reputational risk. You're, you're building my burn down in the middle of the night. Just play along. Nobody gets hurt. Go ahead. That is who you're dealing with, America. What's your choice? Freedom or in bed with the mob?